Morjesta, morjesta everyone, Alexi himself here again live. Uh, it's last day of November and it's great to be here again with you today. So today I'm, I thought about focusing on buying a home in a film because that's a topic I get quite a bit of questions on my videos, Instagram and so on. So, and if, if that's something you plan to do in the future, I'm here to answer your questions about the topic. And uh, it's, we are actually living very interesting times because the interests have gone up, the prices are going, uh, like the living costs are going up, electricity, gas and everything. And it seems the housing prices are also going down, which is very, uh, I would say uncommon in, in the Finnish market because Usually, by looking at the historical trends, the prices have definitely gone up for the most part. So interesting stuff coming up. And if you're joining the show, welcome. Let me know in the comments where are you uh, joining. And or if you're watching the replay, you can also plug it in. We have uh, Ace from Texas. Great. I would love to go to Texas one day. I, I was actually supposed to go to America for the first time in like in February, but just. <laughs> Of course, I happened to grab a corona just when we were about to leave, so that got cancelled too bad. Future Nightmares from Canada. Maple leaves, good stuff. Chuck Norris, Guten Tag, Guten... Uh, guten Tag, aus, aus Finland. Let's get up. Uh, just some German German uh, stuff. Hi from Poland, Strasne Opowiecki. I, I, I really like Poland. I've been to Warsaw a couple of times and Krakow and Gdansk as well. Miika Riekkinen is also Finland. Moi Miikka. Uh, uh, my Han from Vietnam working in Helsinki. Awesome. Adelina is also here from Mumbai, India. Adelina has sent me has sent questions before uh, on this because I was just checking out the previous streams and Adelina sent a couple of questions. So good to, good to have active people here. Great. So about today's topic housing and especially buying a home in Finland. That's interesting stuff. And before we go to the questions, oh, oh yeah. So if you have any questions about the topic, there's a link in the description, this Google Sheets, and you can submit the questions there. So if you want me to, you know, so that I don't miss your question, please use that uh, form because I will jump into those in a bit and your question will be submitted there because, you know, I'm just a regular Finnish guy on Tenet, uh, even if I wanted to check all the chat and and also keep you entertained and help you with the questions. I cannot just do everything, so just uh, just to let you know. Uh, Michael from Brooklyn, New York. Awesome. Eva is also here. Moi, Alexi. Good stuff. Ernest is also here. I'm from Italy. I want to come and stay in Finland. Great. It's it's always great to hear how how popular Finland is among other countries because you know as a Finnish guy I mean because I've lived here all my my whole life I don't think Finland is, is that special but because this I'm so accustomed to this stuff okay but I'm gonna show you a couple of interesting things uh, let me just present my screen and uh, close the Pornhub tab again no just kidding it's like it's a recur recurring joke on <laughs> on my on my streams uh, let me see which which do i want to show okay so here just a couple of interesting uh, things about the current situation so uh, hypo, hypo is the finnish mortgage association or society in finland and they are predicting that the prices are going down for the first time since 2015 so that's actually quite interesting as i mentioned that the, usually the trend has been upward in terms of pricing so that's why buying a home in finland is actually a good thing if because if you plan to live here for the long term and you always have to live somewhere if you have stable finances buying a home is is usually a good option for for uh, this is one of the reasons because the values usually go up but now because of the inflation the Ukrainian war, the energy crisis, all these things mean that prices are going down uh, for the for, for the first time in a, almost in almost like a decade. And let me just zoom in because I think this is too small for you. So, oops, a little bit too fast. 
And also the one of the experts says here that if the economy slows in the deep recession and labor markets stagnate, it will be a frosty time for the housing market. So, so this uh, Johan Brothers is like uh, from the people. So this is something what they said. And let me see, there was something. Uh, okay, I think it wasn't mentioned in this article, but this the ec uh, experts say that the prices can go down next year but in 2024 they start to go back up, uh, up like they start to go up again of course no one really knows how things are gonna go you know what's happening in ukraine and so on but this can be also a good opportunity if you're buying your first home in finland let's say in the near future it's an opportunity because if the prices are going down then it means that you can get a home cheaper most uh Potentially. And actually, let me grab a quick example here. Let me just share, switch to another tab. Let me zoom in a little bit again. So this is Yle. Yle is the Finnish broadcast company, like the state owned. And they made an article. This is just from this week. And this is in Finnish, but let me just translate. So they made an article of this Rebecca Petla, 29 year old. Uh, and they bought, or she bought with her uh, partner, a two-room apartment in Kallio. Kallio is the hipster district in Helsinki, very desired place. And they got they got the apartment with 30,000 euro lower th than the asking price was. And what they uh, what they say here that they they we just tried to offer like a lot under the under the asking price and immediately accepted. So this is a good example that you can actually find get some good deals. Uh, this does not necessarily tell that every place will be sold at this cheaper price because there can be many factors, but it's a good indicator that there can be some opportunities in the market because now there's some pressure, uh, especially among investors. So there are some people who buy an apartment to, uh, to rent it and collect rental income. But now because the interests are increasing, the housing, comp uh, housing company maintenance payments are increasing. So if you know how the ownership system works, if you buy an apartment, you buy shares of a housing company and have to pay this monthly payment every month. Those have also gone up because, you know, the housing company has also some costs like electricity and everything. So those costs are also increasing. So it's not profitable anymore. So even the investors may start, may start selling, selling their flats uh, now. So that's why, and, if pe many people are selling, that mean also means that the prices can also go down. And then one more thing about the interests. Let me go to this. So in Finland, we use this Euribor rates. So this is the reference rate that banks you lend money to each other, basically, just to keep it simple. And this is the 12 months Euribor. Let me zoom in again, if it's a little bit too small. Okay, so this is from the start of 2000s. And as we can see, it's been around 3%, 5%, 4%, 2%. And in 2008, that was when the financial is it depression or like recession happened, like the interest plummeted around 1%. And then from the start of 2010, like from 10 years ago, it's been decreasing to negative which is like it's very extremely rare to happen that the interest go this low and they have been this low until this year and boom three almost three percent interest now and this is also because of the ukrainian war because the electricity price has gone up inflation has started to run as we say in finnish so the low interest time is now over. And this is one of the factors why it's also, why the prices are also going down because it's also more expensive to get the mortgage because now you have to pay around 3%, minimum 3% interest because many people have been, people have been, people have got used to this zero interest environment and now it's suddenly gone away. So these are the things that what, what's been happening but as I mentioned it can be a, it can be an opportunity and now the hot question is is this a good time to buy even with these things well 
there's no simple answer, but how I would approach this is that, that we always need a place to live, right? So if, if you can buy, or if you find a home that fits your needs and your price range, and you can manage the mortgage, for example, I don't see a, it, it can be a opportunity because always if you're living on rent, you're paying rent someone else. But if you buy your own place, that's also an asset. And if you, for example, take a mortgage, every time you pay off the mortgage, you kind of put a little bit money from the bank to your pocket. And usually living or buying a place, like the monthly costs have been a little bit lower, are usually lower than renting a similar place. Of course, this is not so black and white necessarily, but you know, the st statistics say that that, that or the, the statistics also support this factor. Okay, so I, th I thought that I could also put more stuff here, but I want to help you. So that's why I opened the questions form and see what kind of questions you have about this topic uh, instead of just guessing and like giving some stuff which you necessarily not, not uh, be helpful. So let me go to the questions form. I will also have a quick look at the chat uh, every once in a while. Pertti muistuttaa putkireen poista. So Pertti has a good point about like the pipe renovations. That's also something we can talk about today. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to jump to the form next and see what kind of questions they have. So there is this link in the description, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe I should check that the link link is there. Yes, I think it is, and it's working. Yeah. Uh, where is the question? So the first question is from Christian from Poland. Awesome, I've been to Poland a couple of times. Really well, love the country. Uh, he's planning to move to Finland within three years to have his own business, and Helsinki was the reason why. But interested in Finland. The question is, I would like to know what I would have to do to be able to buy a house for cash in Finland as an EU citizen. Okay. Well, I think the only thing you need is the cash, to be honest. Because uh, if you are an EU citizen and you want to buy a house, so there's two types of, there's two ways how you can buy a home. You can buy a house or sometimes also like a full, like a duplex. Like it's like a paritalo, so there's two two homes in one building basically. Then you will buy the real estate. Or the second option is you buy housing shares. So for example, I live in a block of flats, and when we bought this place with my girlfriend, we actually didn't buy the physical real estate. We bought the shares of this housing company, and those shares gives us the con right to control this apartment. But if you're buying a house, um, there is no restrictions. If you're an EU citizen. You can buy a house. So I think the only thing you really need is to find a suitable house that you want to buy and uh, then the cash. Also, one thing what I would like to suggest in terms of cash. So if you buy with cash, like entirely, then you don't really need to get a mortgage. That can be a good thing, depending on case by case. But I usually um, like to get a little bit of uh, mortgage because then okay let's say there's 100,000 euro house uh, let's say I have 10,000 euro down payment I get 90,000 euro okay let's say I have 100,000 euro in cash but I could for example uh, pay down payment 50,000 euro and then I would get 50,000 euro mortgage then I still save the 50,000 euro for example to invest in stock market or other investment opportunities so that that's all uh, that's something you can consider i'm not saying that you should do that that's not financial advice but um that's uh, something you can consider uh also one thing i mean it depends if you live in if you are already in finland you have registered as a resident and uh, then the only thing that you need to consider is the first time buyer so if you're a first time buyer you are exempt from the transfer tax, which is 4% of the sales price in Finland. Uh, 
I have done a video about this first time buyer recently. So yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's the thing. I don't think there's anything else you need to consider. Like, like the factors that will allow you to buy. Of course, then there's things that the location and how, like in what condition the house is, but that's a, like a different story. But good question, good question. Uh, let's take the next question. Adelina again from India. So she's moving within a year for working. And the question is, can a non-EU person buy a house in... Okay, so this is the other, other case. So if you are a non-EU person and you want to buy a house, remember this, you can buy a house or you can buy housing shares. But if you want to buy a house, you can buy, but you need to apply for a permit from the Ministry of Defense. I can actually... Sh let's let's look, that, look that up quickly. Uh, permit to buy... A house in Finland. Let me just okay. Share this tab instead, and uh, let's see. Let's see. There we go. No, where's the? Okay. So here's the thing. If you are a private individual who is not the national of the European Union or the EEA. Uh, dual nationality is also a different case. A company. Okay, so if you're buying the house for a company and a company. But then you just need to apply for a permit. And according what I've read, it's that there has been only one deny for this permit. And that was very recently when some Russian person tried to buy I don't, I don't remember the details, but there was a Russian person who tried to buy some sort of real estate and the Ministry of Defense like denied the permit. But aside from that, I think there has been no other deny, denies for that. So as long as you just, you're buying it for your living purposes, it should be quite straightforward, but that's, that's, that's how it works. Okay, hopefully that helps. Yeah, let me have a quick look at the chat. Let me scroll up a little bit. We have Michael from Brooklyn, New York. Good stuff. Black Otoya says Finnish house are overpriced. We'll be looking for a house for a couple of weeks, but it's never low as media wants to spill it. Well, it depends. It really depends where you want to buy. So if you're in the capital area, the prices are high. Not gonna lie. Especially if you're in Helsinki. But for example, that's one of the reasons why we bought our place in Espo because the prices are much more reasonable. It's still a very short way to Helsinki if you want to go there. And uh, the prices are going down. They are, they probably will decline. They haven't declined yet. So because the housing prices, usually the fluctuations happen quite slowly. <laughs> yes, and also overpriced compared to what? So it's also important to understand like what what we are comparing against but yes i i do understand that the or i, I cannot like i would never uh, even me and my girlfriend together i i mean if we wanted to buy a three-room apartment in some downtown helsinki that's that would have been probably quite uh, expensive future nightmares watching this with my girlfriend from finland planning on moving there to be with her excited to hear about this topic okay excellent uh, Eva says, I think we said Eva, hello again. Uh, no, I think we actually checked this. Hello, I am Swiss and I love to go to Finland to, for vacation. Yeah, Finland is a good vacation country as well. Uh, Baroness Nicole Moyalex from Amsterdam. Moy Nicole, good to, good to have you here as well. Uh, and the pipe renovations, yeah, so. Yeah, pipe renovations are is the one that's the pipe renovation is the most expensive renovation that like a house housing like a block of flats can have. And they they are as and as a shareholder, you know, when you buy a flat, you become one shareholders and the costs are divided among the shareholders, but they are still what kind of expensive. 
So Sperti says here that even up to 1000 euros per square meter. So that's the thing. A says, Amen. Joe Taylor, my man, Alexi. My man, Joe, good to have you. Uh, what are the laws for US citizens to finish first of property? Well, they're the same as mentioned with Adelina's question. So as long as you have the money and you find a place that you want to buy. But of course, if you are from the US, you also need to get a residence permit in order to be allowed to live in Finland. So that's just good to understand. Pamela is also here. Moi Pamela. You need permission to buy property. Yeah, it's the same as mentioned. Uh, but that's, uh, yeah, actually good important uh, note here that this only applies to houses. If you buy a bulk of flats, you do not need the permit because you are not buying real estate, you are buying assets like securities, you're buying shares of housing. So even if you're outside the EU, you buy a block of flats, apartment or a row house, you do not need the permit. Coco asks, can I buy an apartment without ASPs or someone grant, grant me? Um, okay, so about the ASP, ASP is this like the Finnish bon bonus, what's it in English again? bonus for home savers account and yes you can buy a home without ASP so but ASP is good because you get some uh, tax-free bonus interest and you get some other goodies like for example you can get this uh, state guarantee free of charge we can also talk about that later if you want but I or someone grant me that I'm not sure what that means but you can buy a home without us if you have again the cash and the collateral from 2020 permission from the finish yes yeah this applies real estate so if you're buying a house but again if you buy yeah it, it's uh, good good that you pointed this out but again if you buy an apartment for example you do not need the permit because you are not buying shares actually we can quickly check this i think there's a faq yes actually there is let's go back here again so is a permit required to buy a housing share or renting a real estate answer is no a permit is only required to buy real estate Buying a real estate means legal act by which ownership of real estate or specified share or parcel of it is transferred to another property. Yes. Uh, and there's also a lot of information here. So you can find it on the Ministry of Defense's uh, website. Let's say Alexi. Hi, go Denmark. Is Denmark playing today on, on uh, football? I think it is like World Cup. Same loss of high. Okay. Uh, Lankanat has a hail from Halex from Sri Lanka. What options are there for new cover to buy a house in Finland? Should we wait two years while working to buy a house with Lankanat? This is a great, a very good question. So, um, if you're just moving in, I would, again, this is not financial advice but this is probably what i would do i would first just to rent first and just settle down and get your everyday life rolling in and and stuff like that and then i would probably start looking into the option to buy and should we wait two years well there is this the the banks will always run a credit check on you when you do the negotiations and usually if you lived in Finland at uh, like shorter than two years, you may have like a no rating credit status. And that can be a problem, but I think it's negotiable. So if you have fin stable finances and in terms of your like related to your costs, I don't think that's a problem, but I wouldn't go straight to buy. Uh, instead, I would just rent first and, you know, get everything rolling because buying can be a lot of hassle and, and stuff like that but um 
I think you can also tr try buying sooner, maybe like six months or one year. It really depends on your your case, but I wouldn't do it like within start doing within six months or so. It really depends. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe I just to conclude, like to get settled, settled in first, and then you can start the negotiation. You can send a loan application to the bank that doesn't really commit to you anything and see what they tell you. Hopefully, hopefully that helps. Is there a window behind the curtains? Yes, there is. Okay, let me see. Uh, Pamela, if you want to buy apartment, buying shares, then you okay. So this is this is what we covered already. Can a person outswap? Yeah, okay, this is also what we covered. Okay, let me see the form next. There's yeah, look, let me just. Okay, there's a question from H Hana from Vietnam, living in Finland for working, good education system. And the question is, I, my partner and I want to buy an apartment, 60 square meters in Uusima area, Helsinki Espo, with a budget of 250k. Good stuff. We want to live near the train station, but when I check the apartments in Oikoti, most of the apartments need to have big renovation, water pipe system, balcony. In upcoming years, people said that you shouldn't choose the apartment with upcoming renovation. Yeah, it's a valid point. Which location should we consider to buy the apartment? Just want to find an apartment in good condition near train station and not too far from the city center on 20k can you share us with your apartment okay so about the renovations that's a good point so because if you buy a home where renovations are coming soon then you also have to pay pay a share of the costs and a good rule of thumb is that usually the big renovations like okay for example the pipe renovation comes every 40 50 years so you can use that, the age of the building to kind of guesstimate when the pipe renovation is coming up. And for example, other reno, uh, expensive renovations are the, the balcony, uh, no, there was some, what did they mention? Water pipe system, yeah. I think balconies are also done every 20 to 30 years. So the, what you can do is that you can, for example, use the age criteria on the, for example, Etovi Oikotie. That, for example, if you buy a home that's built in, let's say, two, early 2000s, that means that there's probably no big renovations coming up yet. So the, uh, the places for which you have looked at are probably in that stage of their life span that these big renovations are coming up. So the age is a big, good factor. So if you if you get like a really newer place, then like let's say build in 2010s, then most likely not for decades, no big renovations coming up. Yep. So that's and if you don't find homes with your criteria, then you probably have to expand. Uh, your criteria a little bit okay let me see which which location should we consider and i mean there's lots of train stations and also metro for example the extension of the west metro starts actually tomorrow i think so you probably have to go a little bit further away but if it's still close to the stations or reasonable distance then it's still should uh, fill your needs. Let me see. We just want to find apartment good condition near the station and two from around 20 kilometers. Yeah, so that, that's the thing. Like looking at the age is, is the key key factor. And let me actually pull up something. Uh, Finland. Renovation prices. Okay, there's a good blog post about this topic. Let me, I can also share that to you. Oops. 
This is from personalfinance.fi. It's uh, this is a blog by Miha. He's from Germany. I've also met him. He's a nice dude. And uh, so facade renovation window balcony. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And here is a very good like a summary. So pipe renovation every 40 to 55 years. Uh, facade every 20 to 50 years. Windows every 30 to 50 years. Balconies every 30 to 50. Okay, these are big lifespans. Roof is also a little bit more expensive than elevator. But as you can see, you can use the age of the building as a factor. And also, secondly, you can look from the housing company renovation plan, like when they are expecting these things to happen. For example, in my, you know, all flat, we just had this facade renovation of all there because the building is built from these uh, element blocks and they are combined with these seams. So the seams have to be renewed every 20 years. So that was done, but it's actually not that uh, it wasn't super expensive. But this is good. Uh, let me just link this to the comments. And yeah, of course, it always helps to avoid the big renovations or that they have been recently done. That can be also one way to do it. Hopefully that helps. That was a little bit long, long, long answer. And with the budget under 25K, mm, yeah, I think that's reasonable budget probably. And I think these websites, uh, there's also etuovi.com, that's good. And I think on etuovi, there is a factor where you can check like a parameter that pipe renovation done. So that can also help. Okay, hopefully these things are helping you. <laughs> let's, take, let's take the next question from Tim, Australia, living in Finland, Finnish family member and partner of my Finnish wife made me interested <laughs> in Finland the first place, that's amazing. And the question is, let me just uh, check. Uh, what kind of risks are there in buying a house before it's ready and selling once it's ready? Is it usually quite safe to buy before an apartment? Okay, so there are okay, new buildings and housing complexes are built all the time. And you can actually buy one when it's still under construction. And the way, I think the way it works is that you will pay like a percentage depending how 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 much it's completed and every every time it reaches like a threshold like when there's 80 percent complete then you pay another payment you will actually do this with your bank and the uh, buying a house okay are we talking about house before it's ready and then um, Okay, if we're talking about house, not housing complex, I'm not, because, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit, little bit nitpicky here. But, well, I haven't bought a house myself, but I'm not really sure if there's much risks. Of course, assuming that's built properly and, and stuff like that. Okay, but there's the is it usually quite safe to buy before an apartment is ready? Okay, so buying a house because I mean you know it's a little bit, a little bit uh, different if you're buying a house or buying an apartment. Okay, let me talk about buying an apartment because that's something I know more of. Uh, I think it's usually safe to buy like an entirely new place, and there's some sort of like insurance also. For, if the construction company goes bankrupt before it's ready, then you can get your money money back, as far as I know. And uh, like the thing is that if you want to sell the place, you should live. Um, okay, again, not you, you should, but you, not necessarily that you should. But if you live in the place for at least two years, and then you sell it, you will get to keep the profits tax free. You don't have to pay the capital gains tax, which is 30% so, uh, of the profits. So that's the only thing that you can consider. There are some people who flip. So they buy an old apartment, who is, which is like in a bomb condition. They renovate it and then they sell it with profit. So that's flipping. But um, what other risks there could be? Well. I think that's that's about it. 
hopefully that helps and it, it, if there's some other additional things or if i fucking misunderstood the question please feel free to submit another another question uh, next question is from vasil from romania living in finland and the question is i bought an apartment in espo four years ago good stuff and this year got the put comment to done do you think the price for the apartment will grow uh as much as the renovation cost that's difficult to say it depends on many factors but usually the pipe renovation does increase the value like any other big renovations but um over the long run the price probably goes up as mentioned the uh, next year the prices can go down a little bit but then after that they may start going up again but um usually the pipe renovation like if there's a price like a place where the pipe renovation has not been done and a place where where pipe renovation has been done most likely the the one where it's done has has like better valuation but of course there may be some loan also on that because the housing company usually takes loan to finance these big renovations and the loan is distributed to owners but um i think in the long run it should should be should be worth it but it it, it really depends on many many factors like how like the location and how the what are the other renovations and what's the condition of the housing company and so on Okay, next question is from Ahsen from Turkey, living in Finland, and the question is... Hi, can someone who has a res Finnish residence permit buy a home in Finland? Uh, well, the answer is yes and no. So you usually need a residence permit to buy a home in Finland because uh, the banks, the, like when you go to the bank, you start the loan, loan negotiations, the banks you, like if you're from outside of the EU and it, um, like the residence permit so what the residence permit means from the bank's perspective is that you will most likely stay in Finland and if you have only like the B permit like the temporary permit for like let's say one year the bank may be a little bit like hmm okay what what happens if you don't get the extension you have to go leave Finland that can be a red flag but if you have the A permit let's say you're you're working, you have a, a like open-ended working contract, you have steady finances, then it's much safer from the bank's perspective. So the answer is yes, but it also depends on some other factors and all, uh, the type of the residence permit. Good questions. Good questions. Hopefully my answers are helping. Let me jump to the chat for a second. How do detached houses work? Are there companies that provide turnkey maintenance? Uh, so detached house is... Uh, is, is in that Omakotitalo. So detached houses, like you buy a house basically. And the thing is, the, the downside of this detached house is that you have to take care of everything yourself, like waste management, heating, water, uh, uh, stuff like that. And okay, that was some sort of <laughs> uh, notification. Um, and also the renovations. So you don't have to necessarily renovate the place yourself. Of course, you can do that if you have the skills. A means to do that but then you have to hire someone to do the renovations that's for example why my girlfriend and i we like to live in a block of flats because we do not have to worry about the uh, renovations because the housing company takes care of them now of course we have to finance them like we have to <laughs> pay our share of the costs but we don't need to get the people to do it uh, turnkey maintenance services well it really depends like like on a regular basis if everything's running nicely you don't really have to do anything in terms of but at some point you have to do the pipe renovations maybe you have to fix the roof uh, maybe you have to fix the windows all these kind of things so you have it, it really depends what you have to do for example my parents they still live in a detached house Titalo, and my dad is really good at fixing stuff and they they always there's always something they they are like fixing or improving and stuff and that works for them because they enjoy doing that and they have the skills they also save a lot of money there and yeah so if let's say if we had uh, uh, 
okay, they actually had the pipe renovation done, but they just got an offer from a company or a couple of offers from a companies who do those pipe renovations. And then they just the best one and you can also get the household deduction to say a little bit of cost there and so on. Okay, a little bit long answer. Hopefully that helps. Seek, seek Heil. Okay. Greetings from Hungary. Suomi Casino saw the house and the countryside are available around 50, 60K with land. What is the catch if there is any? Okay, this is a great question. Uh, the thing is that in those countryside places, people are moving out. And there's, you know, there's maybe not so much services and stuff like that. So the value is going down. So the, usually the rule of thumb is that if people are moving in, the prices are going up because there's always more demand for housing. But if people are moving out, that means that there will be less demand. And in countryside, when people are moving out, the price, uh, if it's not going down, it's well, it may stay at like it may keep its value, but it can also go down. That is the catch, most likely. Yeah, so that that's the thing. Beach property in Rio de Janeiro, first finished both home, both good. <laughs> nice. Daniel says, do you have any idea how the credit facility companies decide whether they don't grant the loan since no credit scores? Okay, good question. So the Finnish credit system, there is no credit score like in the US, but instead you have either no rating. That happens when you move to Finland and you've lived here less than two years. And then you have good standing. It means that you have no payment defaults. So let's say if you get any invoice, let's say phone plan, and you ignore it for too long, uh, then you eventually get the payment default in your rating. And that's that's a catastrophe. I mean, it, it will make your life difficult in so many ways. And then, yeah, and the third thing is that you have some uh, records in your payment history. So that's the thing. There's usually these three stages. But uh, the, what the banks also look at is, is your finances. So the f banks always do a stress test, which means that they will estimate of your repayment ability if the interest would be at 6%. So that they will always do that. I think they have to do it by law. So if your finances, so income versus costs, if they are not too good, then they may say, that, sorry, we cannot give you a loan. But that's very, like, it depends on the bank. And that's always, it's always a good idea to ask offer from two to three different banks, like Ope, Nordea, Danske, for example. Okay, hopefully that helps. Coco asks, can I buy an apartment and paying 10% of it and wit? <laughs> Um, uh, well, 10% is uh, as a down payment, it can help, but it really depends on the collateral. So the thing is that the banks always want a 100% collateralized loan. So let's say if you want, if you buy a 100,000 euro home, the bank wants 100,000 euro worth of collateral. And the reason is that if you cannot pay the loan back, the bank can offset their loss. So for example, they can take the home as their own and they can sell it. So that, that's why the banks want this. And usually the home itself is uh, provides 70% collateralized value. So let's say 100,000 euro home, you put uh, 10,000 euros, 10%, uh, then we still need 20,000 euro worth of collateral from somewhere else. And usually what people use is the state guarantee, Valtion Takaus. So the, the state of Finland can guarantee the 20%. Uh, we can also look into this more if you want. There are also some other ways uh, the banks can offer some their own own products to, co to cover the collateral short for shortfall. <laughs> and yeah, so the banks usually have different options. So. Is 10% enough? Well, it depends on the case. We cannot really say uh, uh, we, we need to look at some other options too. 
Daniel says Helsinki Area plus center of Turku and Tampere are only real expensive places. I think that's true. These are probably the most expensive areas. Uh, okay, this without us or any without anybody guarantee. Well, again, if you can use the state guarantee or the other collateral options that the banks offer, then yes, maybe. Uh, what are the housing prices currently in Tampere? Well, okay. Um, should we do a quick demo? We we could do that. So let maybe that helps. Uh, so let's go to turn of blog porn <laughs> porn hub again. <laughs> no, just kidding. And now my face is blocking. Okay, so this is etuovi.com. This is one of the this is one of my favorite. Well, there's two sites basically, etuovi and oikoti. Okay, see Anti. I'm gonna keep this in Finnish because you probably have to learn the terms. Uh, Tampere, uh, asunto tyyppi, type of uh, the housing, kerrostalo, block of flats. Let's just use block of flats. Let's say two room apartments, two age, and let's keep the price open. Uh, let's click this lisähakuehtoja so we can get more criteria. No, I don't want to answer this. By the way, is, is this too small? I can zoom in a little bit. So um kerrostalo uh okay square meters let's say 50 to 60. i'm just gonna oh, just randomly put this there's some other criteria you can uh, oh it's almost on the almost means like the owner owner home and let's put now the kohteet and let's click karta karta means map and here we can see but it really depends where. So city of the Tampere downtown probably has much bigger prices than for example over here. But if we scroll down here, downtown, oh, there's a lot of places on sale. On sale. Okay, Tammela. Let's see if we click here. We can see built in 58, 210K price. Okay. Uh, what about this one? This is much newer, 2019, almost 400K much more expensive uh what about here built in 84 a little bit less than 300 000. okay so this is how you can do the research and this is how you should start doing the research and these are block of flats but as i mentioned you can do your own criteria and, and search it that way okay so that's just that's just like a quick demo how you can do it. Uh, uh yeah, I think we all answered that one already. We are in Espo looking for Omakotitalo. The chances we are facing is the yhte, sometimes nine hundred euros. Uh okay, so I may be missing something here, but if you're buying Omakotitalo. There is no vastike because the vastike is the maintenance payment that you pay to the housing company. If you buy a omakotitalo, so so the uh, detached house, a house, there is no maintenance payment because you take care of everything yourself. Uh, vuokratonti, so vuokratonti means that uh, uh, someone else owns the land and the owner leases the land to the for example, the house owner. That's of course a disadvantage because that increases the cost. For example, this home what we bought, this housing block of flats, the housing company owns the land as well, so we do not have to pay rent on that. So not really sure what the vastike is because omakotitalo detached houses do not have the vastike payments. Uh, Vitali asks, do I need to have ASP for some time? Or can I get it, put money on it and then go apply for a loan? Okay, so for the ASP, so this is the bonus for home savers account, you need to save it minimum for uh, eight calendar quarters, which equals two years, if you want to qualify for ASP loan. So if we opened an ASP account today, we could use the ASP for uh, to get an ASP loan in 
like in the quarter four of 2024. So it's you have to uh, use it for two years minimum in order to use that. And you also need to save 10% of the home you want. These are really good questions. Thank you so much. So this also gives me a better understanding of what are the most burning questions you may have. Okay, let me jump to the forms again because people are probably patiently waiting the questions over there. Uh, next question is from Adelina. I, I think Adelina already had the question, probably yes. Uh, let's see where we... So the question is, Hi, my husband has a resident permit A. Can he buy a house or flat? Well, the question is again the same. So the residence permit on itself does not qualify you necessarily to buy a place. Because, I mean, if we consider that they need to get the mortgage and stuff. But it's a good, good start. If your husband has a, a permit, then that's a green flag for the bank. So, again, we, can, can he buy it just because he has the permit? Well, not necessarily, but that's a good start. I I, I would assume what I would do is just send a, a loan application and see what the banks say. Uh, Farhad from Finland uh, asks, what is the right of occupancy for apartment? Uh, I have just recently made a video about this topic, like a couple of weeks ago, focusing on this. Uh, so I recommend to watch that video. Basically, uh, you buy 15% of the acquisition price of an apartment and you will get an ownership to that place. Uh, you, pl you also pay this monthly payment, which is a little bit less than the market rents. And the housing company will take care of the renovations. You don't really have to worry about those. But I'm not going to go too much in the detail because the video explains about that topic. You can get better answers there. Uh, next question is from Tudor from Romania. Uh, have dis has not decided whether wants to live in Finland yet. I met the Finnish guy last year in the UK. I went to exchange thanks to Erasmus. Good stuff. So the question is, so if I were to learn the language and come to Finland, all we know the language, what, the, what uh, would that create an advance in terms of networking? F learning the Finnish always helps. Not necessarily to find a job, but just finding a person or two I can call, call, call friends. I have to mention that I like to go being digital nomad and depend on very little, not on all the state. No, Finland is very expensive, cost of living, high tax, but meaning of Finnish speaking. Okay, answer is it does. Learning the language, if you want to move to Finland, it always helps. Always helps. Uh, Andra from the US, USA asks, I'm a dual citizen planning to move to Finland in a couple of years for military service. I've never been to Finland. Still learning the language. Do you have advice for making the transition to living and serving in different countries? Um, well, just understanding the way of life and also researching the job work market a little bit to have better chances to get yourself employed yeah doing the doing the research i think that's that's the thing okay uh let's go to the chat it's my first time to buy an apartment so the rules are the same but i have asked but i can't wait two years to get the first one well um if you plan to buy soon and you still don't and you have have to wait let's say one and a half years to get the ASP then I would just probably dump the ASP and get a regular loan that's actually what I did because I started to the ASP way too late and we st we planned to buy earlier because it made sense for us to buy earlier then considering just to if you have the means and the goals and the ambition to buy sooner then the, when the, before the ASP gets kind of qualify then you can just dump the asp and go for regular hey peter herfos and 100 nord norwegian crowns thank you so much for the 100 norwegian money really appreciate it uh vasila says i bought an apartment uh okay 
I think we answered this one. Yeah, people are putting it in the both. Okay, makes sense. Usually, how much is the monthly mortgage in Helsinki or big cities? Well, this really, really depends on what what kind of house you or what kind of apartment you buy. Because if you buy a single room apartment versus four room apartment, that it can be really, really big difference. So, and it also depends how much you're gonna put down, like down payment. Because if you have put put, put more money down, then um, the mortgage is slow, uh, smaller, smaller as well. If we can get a little bit more uh, criteria, maybe we can do a quick demo on that. Right? Okay, it's going to be good too. Yeah, looking forward to that too. It's good to keep in mind that the metro, for example, isn't always very reliable. Okay, well, uh, to my, in my opinion, it's been quite reliable, but I don't live close to the metro, but I use it every once in a while. But met living close to the metro line, I think it's also a good, good thing. Can someone who has a residence permit to buy a home in Finland? Yeah, I think we answered this. So, you, I think you definitely need a residence permit. And probably preferably an A permit to convince the bank that hey, I'm gonna be here for long term and I'm gonna pay the pay the mortgage back. Daniel says it's also easier for foreigner to buy a house in Helsinki area. Everything just works better. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it depends what you mean works better. I live in Espoo and everything works better as, as well. And I've also lived in Tampere, Hervanta, and everything also worked nicely there well I, I i think i get the point what daniel is pointing that you know life is just easier in, in big cities uh, yes and no again if you have the financial means to buy a house in helsinki area for example then go ahead uh which bank is good for ASCII? uh this is good uh you can open an asp account at any bank and it doesn't matter in which bank you open, uh, because if you, uh, later when you plan to buy, you can actually transfer the ASP to another bank. So it doesn't really matter if you if you're a customer of Ope, you can open it there, and later you can transfer it. No risk to buy a house before it's ready. Ah, yeah, I think this is something. Hey, Vitali, thanks for five. Euros really appreciate it. Moi Valko Venäjästä. Do you know if, if I can ask straight away just putting the money there? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. I think we answered this. This so you need the minimum two years. Should we? I can actually let me see. Asp requirements. The Nordea has some good info about this. Why is it ah, close settings? Necessary only. <laughs> okay. Eligibility for the ASP. So these are the same for every every bank. So you can open ASP account if you're between 15 and 39. And you have never owned 50%. So this is important. Uh, you make deposits in at least eight calendar quarters or in three month intervals, in other words, and you may deposit between 150 to 3000 euros in one quarter. And you're eligible for an affordable ASP loan when your savings amount to 10% of the home's purchase price. So this is how it works. You need to, in, you need to have it minimum two years in order to qualify. Sorry, I meant apartment for the house. Okay, I think this is the new thing. Yeah, okay, so buying a new apartment, usually there is no risk because I think there is insurance if the construction company goes bust. But, um, well, there are some other risks we could also, we, we could also think, well, okay, I can explain it quickly. So when a new building starts to be built, there's a construction company that founds a housing company and the housing company owns the, uh, no, the construction company owns the housing company. And when they start to pre-market the 
their flats and they may for example buy find uh, buyers then they will get money for that and the housing the construction company okay so there's the construction company who owns the housing company and the housing company takes a loan from the bank to finance the construction costs and usually they can be even 70 percent of the apartment's price is uh, is the housing company loan and 30 percent is is like the uh, regular money okay I, I think this is very d difficult way to explain it i think i should draw it draw it to you and because there's so much loan uh, like the housing company loan and now the interests have gone up there is a risk that if the shareholders the, so the owners may, may not be able to pay the the housing company loan so that can be also a small risk again <laughs> Well, this probably just made it more uh, confusing than before. The before I answer this, this this is probably something I, I should make like a drawings and explain it more. But usually there's like in terms of the technical stuff, probably no risk because it's a brand new home. There's no renovation is going to be in many years and so. Bird Bird asks, do you prefer a house or a flat? Well, my girlfriend and I we like a flat because we don't need to. For example, worry about the renovations, like getting everything done ourselves. We also, of course, have to pay them. Uh, flats are usually in better locations. So there's, for example, a shopping center like 200 meters from us. If we wanted to house, we would have to go a little bit further away from there. So we prefer a flat. Daniel says, and generally you can even get the house in Helsinki since many aren't big building and very expensive. Yeah. They're very expensive, like houses. Daniel also says, I prefer a house myself since I don't live in a suburban area where parking is limited. Mm -hmm. Good point. Pamela says, we bought two parking spaces and we rent till them. Okay, that's cool. That's another way how to do it. Tim says, thanks for the help. Good, good, to, uh, good to hear my answers help. What is the right of occupancy? Okay, this is this was mentioned over there. Does Finland have government-funded resident? Uh, Finland does have uh, government-funded apartments, but they're mostly for rental. Permits a based on family ties and working, then it's easier. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Renovations in detached house don't come often and they may be even cheaper compared to book of fats yes that's uh, that's a good point it depends on the type of renovation uh, we just had the pipe renovation of our parents place but i don't remember how much was it uh yeah i i cannot remember but it, it was five figure five figures but they also got the housing deduction tax credit for that um but for example the roof renovation compared to a block of flats or house i don't know i would think it's a little bit more expensive with with the house because uh, in a block of flats you share the costs with everyone but in a house you paid all your, from your own pocket any advice about lump sum house ownership um can you give me explain a little bit more what do you mean by lump sum home ownership just wanted to understand better we got denied the third parking spot because the stress test kicked in okay so this is a good example so the stress test is this the bank will always stress test your repayment ability by putting it to six percent even if the interests are not at six percent they just make the scenario how much you would pay if it was 6%. And if they if they doubt that you can pay your mortgage back at the 6% interest, then they may say no. So that's that's how it works. Vital says, thanks for answering. Good to hear. Uh, Jeff asks, Kivista versus Corso, which is better? Well, unfortunately, I don't, yeah, these are on, uh, areas in Vantaa as far as I know but 
I know I'm not really familiar with the areas myself. It it really depends on your personal needs. For example, when my girlfriend and I, when we were defining what kind of place we want, we wanted to have a shopping center close or like let's say stores and services close, uh, close to public transportation. And uh, I think those were our main criteria at, at this time of, at, at this stage of our lives. I think we had also some other criteria, but I mean, in terms of location. Cindy says, is there a reason bedrooms in Finland are super tiny? Every house I've seen has such so more bedrooms. Why? Um, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm biased to answer this because I'm just a Finnish person. I've lived here myself. If anyone else, hey, what do you guys, what do you guys think? Are Finnish bedrooms small? It really depends where you compare to and where you come from. Yes. Okay. Let me have a quick, quick, quick at the form. Okay. Everything covered in form. We can continue with the chat. By the way, uh, is this conversation discussion what we're having helpful? Are, are you learning something new? Because that's that's something what I would, what I'm trying to help help you with. Coco asks, what do you recommend me to buy first apartment? Which stuff should I be careful from pipes? I also have us, but I don't want to wait two years for apartment because I want to rent it for people. Um, well, I think the most important is always the location. Getting a place from a good location is always, always better. And then it really depends what kind of other f criteria you have in terms of the size, uh, if whether it's new or a little bit older, um, things like that. And also, my I guess something to consider is, is that the first your first home is not your dream home. So some people try to get put the set the bar too high even if it's their first home so the, as for the, as for the, especially for the first Finnish home just getting something where the basics work and then a couple of years later you can upgrade that's also something I would uh, encourage to think about and also about the renovations I would the pipe renovation is the, the, the biggest horrible nightmare you know so either that it's already done or it's coming like in, in decades or something. Eric asks, how is the housing market now when the interests are going up? Uh, yeah, we actually covered this in the, in the very beginning of the show. Uh, well, the short story, long story short, the prices are most likely going to drop a little bit next year. But in 2024, the experts say that the trend is going to go, uh, go back up again. Slendis on täällä moro moro puhutaan asuntomarkkinoista ja asunnon ostamista. So it's like what's the topic about? Pamela says kivistö is growing and there's good bus that gets to the Murmanni and train station. Okay, good to get some insights. Has Myllypuro Helsingin neighborhood a good reputation? I'm not really familiar with Myllypuro myself, but I don't think there are no bad reputation areas well maybe some people areas in the east east sector but like the, on the general level there are no bad neighborhoods in terms of reputation of course in terms of functionality like having stores and services or public transportation Gorsa is a great place if you want to I want to have a family and a house okay good to hear Vitali says do you know if it's okay to live near a power plant we are looking into Kaita from where I know from this is not the best idea. Power plant, I mean, is it like a electricity power plant? Depends on, I guess, depends what kind of power plant is it, but I don't know. At least I cannot think of anything negative about it, but I have never faced this problem, but I guess it should be fine. 
Hey, I got offered a position at the Metropolia, but were worried about how difficult it would be to get a job as an English-speaking student. Uh, any advice where to look? Um, so, are you worried about the studies or the jobs? I mean, many students do this food delivery work because you can do it in English. So that's something you can consider, I guess. Uh, another super sticker from Italy, five euros. Really appreciate it. A part-time job. Okay, so many people do this food delivery stuff. There's also some videos about that. Uh, I haven't done those videos, but people who do that. So, for example, Volt and Foodora, they offer this. Uh, I appreciate your help. Have a nice week. Uh, have a nice evening. Thank you, Coco. Really appreciate it. Okay, uh, let me jump to the forms and grab some water. <laughs> wow, it's already been one hour. Time flies when you're having fun. Okay, Pragha from Finland. Our uh, remigration, Finnish descent education. And the question is, just a second. I got a rivitalo. So rivitalo is a terraced house, you know, where the houses are like, it's like one building, but there's like a, they're in a row, you know. I guess it's row house in, in English. The seller didn't give me the varasto key. It was sold by a lawyer because of some issues between kids of the dead father. Housing company is not taking the responsibility to give the key how to handle it. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is an interesting case. Uh, I, I don't know. This this sounds very peculiar. It was sold by a lawyer because some of the issues between the kids of the dead father. Um, it sounds. I mean, I, if the varasto varasto is a storage, if the storage is your. No, it sounds the housing company should help you with this but i don't know unfortunately this is very special case a very unfortunate case i mean i never heard of anything like this happening pamela says 22 236 k 40 54 square meters to huone and sauna konala helsinki is that the place you bought sounds pretty pretty nice Okay, excellent. So oh, hit thumbs up if these these things have been helpful because I mean, you know, buying a home in 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 Finland is something that many foreigners also want to do. It it does make sense financially because there's many financial benefits. You know, the price appreciation and and uh, and stuff like that. But you know, finding the information in English is definitely a bit challenging. So that's why I'm kind of venturing this topic because I also bought my this place one year ago around. And uh, if you want to become like a really like a true Finn, okay, it's not not this is like obligatory obligatory to do so, but for Finland for Finns it's actually a big deal to buy a home. We always kind of like a, it's been like a prestigious thing to own your home. So that's the thing. Uh, Adelina says, thank you for answering questions and being a patient. You got this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good to hear. Tuyen also says, super helpful. And Simon is also here. More from Bo Bo Boland, Poland. Brack says, thanks for answer, replying to my questions. Great. Yeah. Uh, that's really, really good thing. Let me just grab some more water. Yeah, and by the way, quick question, would you want to learn more and have more like this in-depth stuff about how the process works from step by step from getting the mortgages and finding the apartments and reading the apartment listings and 
negotiating the prices and all these kind of things. Would would it, this be interesting to you? Write yes in the chat if this sounds interesting because I I have something uh, to help with this one. <laughs> so if, if someone says, yeah, actually where, okay, moment. Uno momento, where is the, there it is. Yes, because um, as, a, as you maybe heard, as you may have maybe heard on my community post and stuff, I have been thinking about creating an online course about buying a home in Finland and especially buying an apartment because that's something I have recently done. And I have now opened this like a champion access. Let me just show it to you. Oops, this is wrong, wrong tab. So to create an online course about buying a home in, in Finland and so the step-by-step -step guide to buy your first home in Finland confidently and uh, and with with good price and everything. So, as I, so this course has not been created yet, but I'm looking for five people maximum who would like to become like the champion students. So, basically, uh, the idea is that you could create the course with me, and we would have these video calls, like. Four, four video calls to kind of help you the process and give you some guidance and you would get uh, early access to the content actually let me zoom in again it's so small and also you get to shape the course and its contents and you will also get the course with lower price and as i mentioned four video calls like we can do like video calls and see how the process is going help you with the questions and this is for you if you're planning to start the process soon or you're in the process and you want to buy your first home confidently, you know, without hassle and stuff. And you want to save thousands of euros by knowing the best negotiation tips and avoiding expensive mistakes. So that's that's the transformation what I want to provide provide to you. And uh, yes, and there's some early curriculum. So this would include everything from the basics, like how the housing company system works, some uh, first time buyer benefits, and then about getting the mortgage, how the ASP system works, how to apply. I'm going to actually show you step by step how the stuff works, how the collateral and down payment requirements work, how to review a mortgage offer and how to negotiate better offer. This is an easy way to save thousands of euros of cold hard cash by just negotiating a better offer. So I will give my tips to, to do those. So then uh, looking for the ideal home, uh, how to use the apartment hunting websites, how to read the listing, how to figure out the market price, that's also important, and setting up the viewing as well. Then housing company documents, this is actually quite tricky because uh, getting understanding the housing company is actually one of the key factors. So if you buy a home from a badly managed company, that can turn out to be expensive. So I'll help how to read the documents and find the key information from there. Of course, renovations and then purchasing the home actually like negotiating the price submitting an offer finalizing the things con concluding the sale and stuff like that so this is just like the early early curriculum we can of course shape this based on your feedback and to get this champion access this is 239 euros and you will get this champion student access so on champion is just the the uh, title I made for this, and there's a link in the uh, link in the description if you con consider if you want to become a champion student and help me to get you through the process and also do this uh, journey together. So, and as I mentioned, there's only five spots because I'm gonna keep it kind of small and see if this works and and uh, yeah. So to kind of do it with like this private group first and then maybe open it to public later on. Yep. So if you want to join, there's a link in the description. If you have any questions about this. And uh, also one thing what I want to note here is that this first version focuses on apartments like block of flats, row houses, because the thing is that I haven't personally bought a house myself. So uh, I don't have hands-on experience. I, I have, of course, learned and read about the topic, but uh, I would be more confident to guide you the process if you have done it myself. 
But maybe in the second version I may do that, if that's interesting. Yes, so this is now open and I can still answer a couple of questions here for you, whether, whether it's about the course or about the topic. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, negotiate the price. Yes, this, this is actually an easy way to save money. So, uh, because there's always the asking price, but you never want to offer the asking price because you can always try to negotiate the price lower and easily save thousands of euros. We actually got this place with 9,000 euro lower than the asking price. So I, I will give you some negotiation grips over there. Yep, yep. Okay, and the, the price also includes the tax, so that's the final price as well. Uh, cool. Let me just go back here. Tien uh, says, thank you so much for this. I have a question. I have saved enough for my ASP account. Should I continue putting money there? Is there any benefits? Um, so, depends what the ASP contract says. Sometimes you can get the tax-free bonus interest for the whole saved amount, but sometimes it can be only limited to the 10% uh, of the flat. So it depends what the contract says, because the uh, bonus interest is 4% tax-free. So if you have that clause there that you will get for the whole amount, then maybe it makes sense. But if you, uh, another option is just to save it for example, in on stock market or some other, if you need money for something else. Really good question. Yeah, so, so what I would uh, consider is check the contract and go from there. Is property speculation common, common in Finland? W what does that mean? I haven't heard of this before. Pamela says, one of my hobbies is looking at apartment flats. I'm strange. Oh, no worries. That's you're just interested in the topic. Maybe you can become like a invest by an in, uh, uh, investment apartment one day because you're not clearly interested in this. And if you, if and when you have your finances in control, that you can buy, for example, second place and rent it out. Why not? Sounds like you're on the right track. Uh, three room apartment, open kitchen, glass glazing. Do -do 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 -do. Mm -hmm. Seems interesting. How to deal with tenant candidates whose credit report is bad? They are saying that it's happened in the past. Everything will be fine. Shock to see finish. Yeah, this is actually very common. So, I mean, this is for if you are renting a place and you you have these candid tenant candidates. There are actually many people who have kind of fucked up their finances and they have these uh, credit records. Uh, personally, I I've, uh, I have never rented a place myself. But I would avoid those because it's it's a huge red flag, and uh, yeah, I, I would I would just set the bar high enough to get a proper tenant because it's also a huge time and money loss if you kind of have to ev evict them and stuff like that. Yes, we would love to know more about housing. Okay, good stuff. Yeah, so in the course, I I really want you to go from A from A to B, so to buy your first home confident. That's 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 the result I want you to get with the course. BJ says, I love your channel and hope to travel to Finland one day. Hope I'm even ran into you. Sounds like a plan. Five people were bidding for our flat. They accepted our offer. Okay, that's amazing. So yeah, sometimes if the apartment is really desired, there'll be many people people can give offers and bid on it. So that's always, then the seller will always win because many people are just increasing their offers. For real, banks are scammers. Okay. We would like to hear reasons also why. Uh, what, where is the cheapest to get the Asunto line? Okay. I can give you the first tip to get save thousands of euros for the uh, Asuntolana means the markets. Do not accept the first offer. Never. Because that's the most profitable for the bank. Instead, go to two to three other banks, 
get offers and then leverage the other offers you have. So you get an offer from bank one, then go to bank two and say, hey, we got this bank from bank one, can you improve? Then they give a better one, then you go back to the bank one to say, hey, this bank two, get better offer, can you improve, and blah, blah, blah. Until that say, like, okay, this is the best we can do. I just joined after studying and feeling, can we buy a house there? Um, yes and no. Again, if you have good finances, you have a residence permit, you have a job, most likely you most likely you will always need a job because that's the regular steady income. But yes, if you have this, then you can buy. Do you think now is a good time to buy a flag, uh, probably a flat with the interest rate like it's now? Well, this is something what, uh, this is a really good question. And as I mentioned, the prices may be going down next year. And in the beginning, I showed this example where this couple got a two-room flat with 30,000 euro discount or 30,000 30, euro lower offer. Uh, but the thing is that we always need to live somewhere, right? And if you can find a good place that fits your needs and you can handle the mortgage, then I don't see why not. Because uh, paying off the mortgage will all, always, of course, put money to your pocket also. And if you plan to live there, let's say at least a couple of years in the future, hopefully the world situation have already stabilized. And also the experts estimated that the prices would start go back upwards in 2024. But yes, that's that's what I would, these are some thoughts, food for thought. This is not like financial advice. Good tip, thanks. Nice. Uh, Eric says, are the Finnish taxes some hard if you buy an apartment, rent it out, others? Um, it's not too hard. Uh, of course, it, you have to kind of study a little bit of the things, but the things that uh, if you rent a place, you can deduct all the costs that are related to the, uh, the renting, basically. Yeah, so you just need to study a little bit the stuff. But uh, also the Finnish tax administration has pretty good uh, instructions for renters. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's too difficult. There are some some few details which are a little bit tricky, but not impossible. There are some, I, I know some foreigners who are renting their places. Okay, let's take a couple of more questions. Also, why is it impossible to talk directly to the seller when the agent is showing the apartment? The seller would know questions if there's noise and such. That's a very good question. Um, so most of Finns or most people use an agent to sell because they can take the whole process. But yeah, I don't know. That's, that's a very good question. Uh, sometimes you can try to, if you see neighbors, when you're going to view and you can ask the neighbors like, hey, this is a very nice looking area. We are considered to buy the place. How is the life here? Uh, yeah, but that, that, that is a very good point. Some, some, if you ask the agent the question, they say, yeah, it's, it's good, you know, they probably just say always that. Thanks a lot. It would be helpful for many people if you have these kind of live sessions at least two months, or two months once or once for two months. Good to know from previous Pinter Party. Okay, good to hear this. Why is not my super sticker going in? Uh, I don't know. Maybe you can try it again. It's not. I don't know. Maybe it's some sort of glitch. Then we do not have PR to buy a house. Uh, yeah, you don't need a permanent residence permit. Probably you will need an A permit. But uh, RPs, I would assume that RP is not necessary, but A permit most likely. Holden says, just got my response from Polsus Ministry. That's the Ministry of Defense. Finally going to be a homeowner. Okay, congrats. So this is an example that Holden had to apply for a permit because uh, is Holden a male or female name? Sorry, this is a very 
very rude question. But okay, but Holland had to as a permit because Holland is from outside the EU, I would assume. And now they got the permit, so congrats. Vero has good even in English, yes. There's very good instructions in English. Okay, but as mentioned, I have this beta test, like champion access to my home buyer course, to, just to see if there's interest for this. Uh, if there's not, then I will just grab the idea and try something else. Uh, so there's the early early bird price. You will get to have a couple of video calls with me, and I will create the course course content together with you. And of course, I will help you to guide you the process. So make sure to click the link and sign up. There's five spots. I'm gonna just keep five spots. Uh, okay, couple of more questions. Then we're gonna call it a day. Maybe I'll go to sauna sauna as well. Uh, Grace asks, Kerrostalo, Rivitalo, Omakotitalo, which is the better choice? Okay, so we covered this a little bit. So Kerrostalo is a block of flats. Usually the pros is that they are in good locations. For example, there's shopping centers very close. You cannot get the house. Omakotitalo is a house. Houses are usually a little bit further away. Uh, Rivitalo and Kerrostalo are pretty much the same. With, uh, with Rivitalo, you probably have your own yard as well, backyard, front yard, depending. And with Kerrostalo and Rivitalo, you do not have to worry about the big renovations because the housing company, the Kerrostalo and Rivitalo are always, pretty much always housing company structure. And if you have a house, you are responsible for everything yourself. Usually the living costs are a little bit cheaper in Omakotitalo, so house, uh, detached house. But if there's big renovations in a house, then you have to pay them yourself, whereas in in Kerrostalo, Rivitalo, you share the costs with the others. Paritalo is a duplex, yes, that's a good point. Yep, so for example, why my, why my girlfriend and I, we live in a block of flats, is because we value the convenience. We don't have to do the snow work and, and the sanding in the winter, and we don't have to worry that to, to hire the renovation people because the housing company just I'm actually in the board of our housing company so I'm also kind of involved because I'm just interested but uh, yeah and we also share the responsibility and the risks and the cost with the other shareholders is it true that all houses have saunas well most of them do a, a very big slice of houses and even block of flats. Even my three-room apartment has a sauna home here. So Pamela has a good option. Uh, example, I hate yard work, so I like Kerrostalo. Kerrostalo is a block of flats. So yeah, you don't have to c cut the grass or do these things, things like that. Okay. Uh, I. It seems, was this session helpful? Write yes in the chat if you like this. And I mean, we can do this every once in a while and I'm going to see how, how things are going to go with the, with the course. So, and even if the course never happens, I can still have this Q&A sessions because I always enjoy helping you out and reaching your fi Finland related goals. But if you are serious about buying a home in Finland in the near future, then the course is perfect for you. And now you get this like more access to me and with other champions to students to to get you through the process and I, I will get you to buy your first home in Finland like a boss. Excellent. So click the link in the description. Uh, see the see the details. If you have any questions or if you're like sure about something, just um, write me and I will uh, gladly help you out. So hope to uh, hope you had good uh, time with this session and I will hopefully see you in the course and I will wish you great what day is today, Wednesday. So have a great Wednesday and thank you for the session and see you soon.